third film in the MonsterVerse smashes into theaters this weekend, so let's talk about it. Godzilla King of the Monsters picks up five years after the previous film and finds mankind trying to decide how do you move forward in a world with monsters in it. While this is a direct sequel to the 2014 film, you don't really need to have seen it to understand what's going on here. This film pretty well fills you in on everything that you need to know, which is essentially just that there's big gigantic monsters in the world. Some of them are bad. There's a secret organization called Monarch that believes that Godzilla is one of the good ones. That's about it. As a point of reference on me, I'm not someone that kind of grew up watching all of the old Godzilla films. I've only seen the United States films. Be sure to share your take on the film down below in the comment section. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did it live up to your expectations? All of that fun stuff. And let's get started talking about the good. And the first thing that comes to mind is that the movie greatly expands upon the mythology of this universe. Whether you're talking about Monarch and its history, all of the different monsters on planet Earth, you kind of dig deeper into the history of the appearances of monsters throughout human history. And then even Kong and Skull Island are very frequently referenced inside of the film. It's also a movie that moves at a very quick pace. The plot kicks in in the first five minutes and it never really lets up. You kind of move from thing to thing. You have this sense of urgency and forward momentum very early on in the film. The movie also has a nice sense of humor inside of it. It's not like big joke setups, but more the way the characters interact with each other, their sarcasm, the little moments that would be funny inside of a situation like this. They worked well enough for me and my audience was definitely laughing out loud at the jokes. In particular, this guy, I don't know what his name is, but he's been showing up in a lot of movies over the last couple of years. And I just think he's like, has a nice funny screen presence. And of course, as this is a monster movie, there's no shortage of monster mayhem. You get your first kind of monster attack in the first 10 minutes and then they keep showing up throughout the entire film and this very much is a global film where you go from continent to continent seeing different places being destroyed by a lot of different monsters and in different ways whether you're talking about monsters destroying cities humans battling monsters or of course monsters duking it out throughout the film you get the mayhem the destruction that is promised by the trailer coming out of Godzilla 2014 one of the big complaints was that Godzilla doesn't really show up until the final act. They kept teasing battles and then it cuts away right when the cool stuff's about to happen. Here, Godzilla gets in a fight in the first half of the film. He gets in a fight in the middle of the film. He gets a fight in the third act of the film. You get Godzilla throughout the entire film doing stuff. And even just as a character, they spend a bit more time with him so we can relate to Godzilla a little bit more inside of this film. With that said, let's move on to the mixed aspects of this film. And the big thing that comes to mind here are the characters. They're played by these amazing actors that have a great screen presence. They can deliver the funny lines. They can be convincing as they're screaming and shouting at one another. But as soon as you get past the fact that the actors can make them fun and interesting, on paper, they're all extremely one-dimensional characters that have one trait that kind of defines them. Any other great actor could have played any of these characters and just swap them out. You don't know anybody's name. You just know their one defining personality trait and their job or their mission inside of the film. And that's about it. From there, let's move on to the bad. And the first thing that comes to mind is that this movie has all of the genre cliches. Last minute saves, actually a lot of last minute saves, technology breaking in a crash, heroic sacrifices, all of that stuff jam-packed into this movie. There's also a lot of plot points where as soon as you stop to think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense at all, especially with the Millie Bobby Brown character where she's just allowed into places where it's like, why would you allow a child that age into this dangerous environment? And if you step back and think about the context and why any of this would happen, it makes no sense at all. I also think they horribly mishandled the plot line involving the mother in this film. I won't go into too many details because it would be spoilers, but in the first half of the film, they set us up to feel one way about her, but then they don't do the proper legwork for where they end up taking that plot line. They either needed to go to a different conclusion or do a lot more work to get to where that plot line goes. As is, it's a plot line that's not very satisfying because it doesn't feel earned. Also, even though there's a lot of monster mayhem inside of the film, some of the shots they chose to use were not 
particularly good. You want these wide angle shots where you can see these huge Titan monsters clashing, but they instead use too many close up shots. There's a lot of times where they show the fights from the perspective of humans looking up at the monsters. And because of that, you just can't see it the way you want to. So they're not as exciting as they should be. Also, whereas Godzilla 2014 did the thing where it teased a Godzilla fight and then cut away at the last second, this movie doesn't do that, but it replaces that problem with this thing where it tells us that monsters have attacked a big city and then it cuts to this 10 second shot of a city destroyed and then it cuts to something else and you stop and think to yourself, I wanted to see monsters destroy that city. That's why I'm watching this movie is to watch that happen, not have you tell me it happened and then just show us the destruction. And somewhat because of this, the movie loses a bit of momentum at about the halfway point, which is weird because that's when monsters start destroying the entire planet Earth and that's when it's slightly less exciting. Before I give you my final thoughts on it, be sure to share your thoughts down below in the comment section. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Somewhere in the middle, we're going to disagree. That's awesome. Let's just be respectful about it. Also, after this video, you can check out my review of Kong Skull Island right up here. It's one of my early reviews, so if you want to see what my channel is like early on, check out that video. Overall, this is a film that fixes some of the problems of the previous films in this universe, but it also makes some new mistakes, but I was never bored and it absolutely delivers the action, mayhem, and destruction that you want from the genre. I'd give it a B minus, but a 7.5 on the entertainment scale. If you like the genre, see it on the big screen. If you're not a fan of the genre and you're annoyed by its cliches, you probably don't need to watch this one at all. Be sure to check out that review right over there to see what my channel was like in the early days. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.